To give you better understanding how this plugin can be used in real-life scenarios, I prepared a test case. Let's say we have this stage consisting of a back screen, DJ boot screen and some side screen, two IMAX and a header screen. Mapper can map the entire stage on one layer. Ok, so back in Arena, I already made an input mapping using our free template for After Effects. As most input mapping, this one is not a standard 9020 by 1080 file, but in this case, 3024 by 2320. You might be wondering why so big and why not doing it all in it in the advanced output. For starters, each clip or each layer can be given a unique mapper preset, so it's like having multiple advanced outputs per layer or per clip. I also made a small stage preview using the advanced output, which I'm feeding through Spout, so we can preview the stage like in real life. Let's start by making the back screen. For now, let's disable the alpha of the test pattern and set the layer to 95% opacity so we can barely see what's underneath. Now, as soon as we apply Mapper, you can see something is not right. The input of the slice seems off and turning the grid on, we only see it being applied inside of the pattern. The problem lies in the render order. Mapper is best used if applied after the transform. Now if we move the transform before mapper, you can see everything is working as intended. Now we can map the back screen properly. You can either turn on the grid so you can see the whole slice or increase the input scale to fill the canvas temporarily. Remember you can hold ALT while dragging to make minor adjustments. Now let's map the DJ booth. I saved the preset where I only mapped the left side doing exactly what I've done before. Now that we have everything mapped, we can start with the fun part, and that is looking at the stage how we want to map it. Let's try to make the inside one big image. Now let's mirror the input of the inside columns by going to the fourth mode. I prepare the circular pattern which helps with these kind of mappings. Again let's turn on the alpha for now and continue with the outside screen. Now that we have everything mapped, we can take it a step further by linking these slices to the dashboard so we can turn off groups on and off. Let's link the back screen DJ booth and inside column slice opacity to dashboard 1. Now we can fade all three on and off simultaneously. Let's do the same with the outside screens and the header.
To make it easier to turn on and off, I map the dashboard to my keyboard starting from A to K. Now when I hit A, S and D, I can turn off each group on and off. During a live performance, you would want to map this to your MIDI device. Taking it a step further, let's say we want to have more groups. I already mapped 3 more slices, one for the back, one for the iMac and one for the booth. I will map these to link 4, 5 and 6. Now I can show and hide these by hitting F, G and H. Mixing it all together, we hide all and enable link 1, 2 and 3. I will re-enable my alpha of my test pattern and fade out my input mapping. Now if I want to show the extra slices, you will notice that they will be mixed together which is not what we want. For this we can enable black BG on these slices to prevent seeing what's underneath. Let's save this preset. Now we can easily apply this preset on a different layer. Let's say layer 3 is a camera layer. It's just a matter of applying the preset and setting your dashboard links accordingly. Having all the parameters inside of Arena makes it possible to link and animate this which makes it a fun and creative experience. And that's how easy it is to use Mapper. For more information please visit our website www.division.net.